since we did a Superman movie last week, it's only fitting that we watch a Batman movie this week. That's why I've got my sights set on the 1973 Turkish Batman film, or as it's properly known as Batman. Clearly named after a group of Bette Midler fanboys from her days of performing at the Continental Baths. And one of their names was Adam, I guess. Don't believe me? Searching for Turkish Batman on IMDb pulls up a lot more entries on bathhouses than it does Batman. It took me a while to settle on Turkish Batman because searching for a bad Batman movie was harder than it seemed. Most of my searches came up cold. Cold? Ice? Freeze it! God damn it! Turkish Batman gives us the untold story of Batman and Robin's takedown of a syndicate which routinely murders scantily clad women. With Turkish cinema, there's one thing we can count on, plenty of lifted music. So, which Batman theme does this movie go with? What the hell? Honor Majesty's Secret Service? God damn it, I picked the wrong James Bond poster! At least this film has the Turk seal of approval. Perhaps that means it'll give us nightmares like this. <laughs> Great. Can't wait for the penguin to shoot out toxic gas from his dick umbrella. And what's with all these Turkish films calling me a cunt? And not just any cunt, but a toger cunt. Fuck you too! And I have a feeling that some of this crew is just an allegory for Jesus. We open with a young lady desperately trying to leave the set of Turkish Batman. Fantastic, when I can't tell if I'm watching a Turkish Death Wish or a Turkish Batman. By the way, Turkish Death Wish is also a thing. But this is definitely for sure, the sun is not only disintegrating the people, but also the whole damn set. This must be the flashback when they kill off Bruce's MILF. Can't wait to see these effects. <laughs> Want to put a stop to that sweet sex? Apparently murdering a woman on the street will do. Wait, wait, you can't just go to the next scene. I'm pretty sure you just shot one of your actors. Yeah, there's no way I'm forgetting. Who could forget anything that these fake subtitles say? Never thought I'd see this flashback. Michael Caine in Alfred, The Younger Years. If it's Batman's job to stop people from being murdered on the street, he's not doing a very good job. It took breaking Michael Caine's knees for Michael Goff to win the role of Alfred. But who do you go to when you need someone to run your syndicate of lady killers? Um, G. Gordon Liddy, I guess? Yalnız şunu da belirtmek isterim ki, bu cinayetler devam ederse sizi de gözaltına alır polis. Nice foreshadowing. I'm pretty sure Axis Chemicals is what damaged the movie's film. Meanwhile, at Stately Wayne Manor slash University Library, we get to hear more of the On Her Majesty's Secret Service soundtrack. <laughs> Thing this movie does have all the time in the world. It's only 62 minutes long. By the way, cameraman, I think you forgot to turn the damn thing off. Batman is played by Turkish Michael Landon, and it's looking more and more like he's a secret agent. Son günlerdeki cinayetleri gazetelerden okumuşsundur herhalde. Tape'in yanındaki dosyaya baktığında onların resimlerini göreceksin. Considering the opening scene and Bruce looking at crime scene photos, this is steps away from being Turkish 8mm. Then again, the entire thing looks like a snuff film. The most colorful thing about the movie is the damn poster. Might as well put the photos down and pick up a menu. A moment like this does call for some room service. And what kind of room service? <laughs> Ah, good! The male escort is here! 
I'm not too sure about this foreplay, but I hope Bruce is getting his money's worth. Still sexier than Bat Pussy. If this dynamic duo is so dynamic, I'd think at least one of them could afford some pants. Oh shit, I may have gotten my hands on the R-rated version of Turkish Batman. Zack Snyder, you cad. Explains why I had to black box even the cover, and why she's grabbing onto Batman's cock for good luck. Speaking of hands, what's with this stiff arm? I think there may be a dead guy in the audience. I see this scene in particular as being filmed at the crack of midnight. I, for one, love my Batman movies to be filmed in glorious something weird video vision. Okay, I know you can't be this excited, Robin. You're both looking at two separate things. I feel that 15 minutes in, this movie has figured out how to bring in the sexy. <laughs> That is, if you're the fucking preppy killer! No joke, this actually is the plotline. A syndicate of fucking serial killers. Who knew several years later, Cobra would go after the same syndicate? And let me hear that voice again. I knew it. This isn't Batman vs. the Penguin. It's Batman vs. the New York Ripper. Can't wait till Batman finds a broken light bulb up someone's snatch. <laughs> Just like in the comics. The most shocking thing about this movie is that it's 1973. I guess that's when Turkish movies were catching up to that wild world of Batwoman mid-60s look. And perfecting talking right to the viewers. <laughs> I don't like it, nor do I like your ridiculous subtitles. That doesn't even make sense. It's not even Catwoman. But it's not like this is really Bruce Wayne or Dick Grayson. Speaking of music, they desperately want to use the theme to Twisted Nerve for this. Too bad they settle on some instrumental version of And the Beat Goes On, probably because the two people in the scene look like Turkish Sonny and Cher. Batman and Robin stop the attack, but it doesn't show them landing, so I assume it's not very graceful. And grace is certainly something I'd expect while watching a Batman version of I Spit on Your Grave. Although Batman does do what he should have done a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Simply blow the motherfuckers away. No wonder this movie's only an hour long. In this version, once he saves you, he has no problem revealing his true identity. Why do I have the feeling that half of the actors don't even know they're in the movie? And that includes this woman. Nothing gets a young Turkish woman hotter than Booker T and the MGs. She's finding out the hard way that sexy pinstripe onesies are very hard to get out of. She's gonna need more booze if she's gonna pry open these clothes. Time is tight, and so is this top. Ugh. Every porno audition that starts out this way doesn't matter what the movie is for. This is a sad story. Though not every porno audition has Batman and Robin showing up to kick their asses, but at least half of them do. They need a stuntman just to play the cameraman. They've gone through 12 cinematographers. Oh good, the day is saved again. <laughs> huh. I joke, but I'm pretty sure he actually said something like that. Oh, now we have Blofeld, too. I can tell because his cat is breaking the fourth wall. This is more like a cross between Batman and James Bond than the actual movie James Batman. I wonder who Batman is. It's fucking James! Now they do what they do every morning. They wake up bright and early to watch the sun explode. It happens all the time in this movie. 
Oh, the water looks mighty choppy today. I'm sure that has nothing to do with the film stock. The movie's got more lifted music than if Stone Gremlin Productions did a movie version of Batman. These movies have taught me that this is the only thing women did in the late 60s, early 70s. Just stood alone in a room and danced. Oh, there's someone at the door, but it's another woman, so I take it that that means she won't be murdered. Jesus Christ! I'm gonna stop predicting things. And Batman does not have the excuse of being stuck in traffic. Why wasn't he there to save her? <laughs> oh right, it's because he was picking up a hooker. My mistake. Those who say a Batman movie should never be rated R have never jerked off to Turkish Batman. How dare he cheat on the woman he's supposed to be protecting? I feel like there was a less drastic choice you could have gone with. Damn, he's fucking the tracking completely out of whack. That goes for the next scene, too. His staticky cock affects scenes it's not even in. And sure enough, he has to pretend to be sick when the girl comes over, now making this movie the Turkish Ferris Bueller. Ooh. Elli. Ah. <laughs> this movie's going into some dark places. Good job faking sick, Bruce. You forgot to cover up your hooker's ass. And someone forgot to give her stage direction. <laughs> and I'm sure she spent the rest of her day just standing there, looking very confused. So, Batman has satisfied a hooker, but another girl has ended up dead. He is the worst superhero! And if everyone knows who he is, why bother putting on the Batman suit? Let's put our best agent on the case! He's great at his job, but he likes dressing in pajamas half the time. While saying that joke, I guess they ran out of women to kill, so they offed G. Gordon Liddy. Is there no stopping Blofeld or his pet? Cat galore! Hurry, come in. It's very overexposed outside. <laughs> Never mind. On a sunny day, it's actually brighter indoors. You gotta love callbacks. <laughs> Lady, sick or not, that thermometer is going up the ass. Or there'll be a death scene. Either or. I don't know what they're drinking, but it's completely dissolved their faces. They ran out of bullets, now they have to poison each other. We now return to police squad, for the first time, not in color. The lighting is so bad, it's actually two o'clock in the afternoon. I have some serious issues with this new Ghostbusters trailer. They're killing off most of its female cast. I'm not sure if she's really dead, but regardless, this ambulance of Harry Reems's is taking her away. Even a half-naked woman will not stop cat galore from looking at the screen. They're about to kill her of skin suffocation. They're painting her with shadows. Look, I'm running out of Batman references. This movie's nothing like Batman. Why, why, why? In missing, in missing. Well, okay, I wasn't expecting a Die Hard quote, but... Hang on. Damn dog, I was yapping and interrupting my reviews! Arf, 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 arf. Anyway, she tries killing Bruce, but he slaps the exposure from here all the way to Mercury. Now it just looks like Donny Osmond, ass kicker. Once again, it'll make your movie much shorter if you just simply shoot the bad guys. Meanwhile, at Club Purgatory, I feel like if we saw what the first annual Purge looked like, it looks something like this. These clubs hire their bands based on their knowledge of other people's soundtracks. <laughs> I don't know what that song is, but it sounds like it should be playing over a sad clown masturbating, yet failing to get an erection. Weird to see someone take padding off while giving the movie padding. By the way, that scene goes nowhere. 
Now we see at least one person walk out of a theater showing their own movie. Well, that'll teach you to give up on Turkish Batman before the movie's even over. Also, Batman fail. Uh, when superheroes tailgate, not sure what the outcome will be, but it'll get at least one innocent woman killed. And they almost lost another cameraman by nearly hitting them with their fucking car. Oh good, a fancy suit fight. I suppose one of them is Bruce Wayne. Dude, why punch the cameraman? He just survived almost getting hit by a car. Robin simply stands by and watches, because that's his fetish. Now that everyone's dead, they can put their costumes on. No witnesses. Hey, wait, I thought this guy was killed earlier. I guess if G's not the one strangling with piano wire, he can't truly be dead. Go figure. The bald guy happens to be Blofeld in this Batman film. First, Batman and Robin have to beat the shit out of Turkish Tony Montana, and then it's one of the only times they actually save someone in the movie. Shh. I'm sure Robin can fend for him. Uh, never mind. Robin, you are truly useless. In bed and on the fighting floor. They couldn't even afford a title card with the words BAM or POW written on them. I'd make one myself, but if the movie's not gonna put forth effort, why the hell should I? Again, why wear the fucking costume? Now they're off to entertain at someone's bachelorette party. That's it, son! There's no more! The movie's over! Well, that was an excellent prototype of what a Lucio Fulci Batman movie would look like. The film was directed by Gune Kosova, who directed only five movies between the period of 1971 and 1979, ending on something called the Haydar? Oh, that's that thing people have when they know someone is a closeted bale of hay. Just wait till you see Turkish James Bond. I've never seen it before, though I'll bet it's a lot like a Batman movie. So I wonder what'll be coming next week on the show. Beats me, but I'm sure it'll have Wonder Woman in it. Arr, 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 arr. <laughs>